Welcome back everyone to another Sunday live stream and today we are going to talk about Avengers Endgame. Hmm. I wasn't planning on watching this. You know me guys, I wasn't planning on watching this but I got a little, uh, I got some access to it let's just say. <laughs> and um, so I got to watch it, right? And uh, I'm going to talk about it here. We're going to go into spoilers. I've got my notes here with me. Hopefully, Doctor Ooze calls in. I'm not sure. I, 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 he's done his review on his iTunes podcast and all that. So, uh, but hopefully, he calls in, Skypes in, and we're going to wait a minute. Let's see who's coming in to the live chat. Whoa, who's this? No, oh no, I thought I got a, a, a super chat there for a second. Um, going to wait a minute, let's have a look. So if you've not seen the movie and you plan to see the movie, this isn't the live chat for you. We're going to go into spoilers. I've not had a chance to catch that many reviews. I think I saw SC reviews, I saw his review, I saw uh, DC vs Marvel podcast, Grace Randolph. Um, uh, so who's in here? Uh, Game Buffy, No Name Pen, Abhinav Sahu, Giant Vaini, <laughs> I Am Venom, Emil Johansson, So let's have a look. Uh, so yeah, going to go into spoilers. You've been warned. Um, don't assault me. Don't come round and assault me like all those other Marvel fanboys have been doing to people who they hear talking about spoilers. Boosh. Her uh, disgusting behaviour. But anyway, so what did I think about Avengers Endgame? <laughs> Marvel does it again. Yeah, they, they give you, um, they, they promise you so much, and in the end, it's kind of a, a mixed, kind of underwhelming result. And I've seen a lot of kind of mixed reaction to it. It doesn't matter what they say on Rotten Tomatoes, it doesn't matter. I've been seeing a lot of, um, you, like, like all Avengers movies, first you think, hey, this is entertaining and. Yeah, I have some problems here and there, but the more you think about it, the more problems start to arise. So let me start with the first, uh, let's see, the opening scene, right? The opening scene, you've got uh, Clint, Hawkeye, with his family, and this is before the snap, right? Or just about to happen, and they're in the park, or I think they're on their... A home property, I think. No, I think they're in the park. Um, and he's teaching his daughter how to shoot arrows. And his wife is there and his kids are there on the picnic. And he turns around and they're all gone. And I thought, this is a really good scene. This could be a really great opening. And then, just when you think there's going to be like a really emotional Clint moment, you know, for Hawkeye, or they cut with some 70s rock music, which is like, there's a lot of moments in this film where it's like, oh, that, oh they're doing that Guardians of the Galaxy rock music soundtrack thing. And I was just like, no. You had a good scene going there and you ruined it. Then you cut to Stark and Nebula in space playing, passing time, playing a game or something. Um... And then you've got, you know, <laughs> what's her name? Captain Marvel. She appears like in this ray of light, like Jesus coming to save uh, these two. And it look really bad. And then she comes down to, then they cut to Steve Rogers and he's, you know, shaving. And then he feels this ship coming and he goes outside with everyone else. And... Captain Marvel is bringing the ship down. 
So they go from this scene and then that, that scene that you've seen in a trailer, the, the clip that they showed where they are, you know, I like this one, that one. And uh, Captain Marvel, she, I'm going to kill Thanos. And she tries walking off and thinking she's going to do it herself. Um, but the thing is, like this opening 20 minutes, so they go from there, then they go to get Thanos and then they find Thanos and then they, Thor chops his head off. Which was really bizarre, like what? Where was this Thor in uh, the time that he was in the, the Ragnarok movie? Hmm? His family and his people have been wiped out. No, he's too busy telling jokes there. But here, all of a sudden, the old Thor comes back and he cuts his head off. Um, and then it's like, oh my god. Uh, you could have you could have kept him. You could have, you know, he could have been your prisoner. He could have given more information, but no. Um, I cut his head off and then he comes up five years later. It's, it's, it's like, like the opening 20 minutes, the, like the structure of it is really odd. It's like they had several ideas on how to open the film and they couldn't decide and they just said, well, here, you know, just chuck in like two or three different uh, kinds of openings. And here we are five years later from this. The, the whole, a, a lot of the movie feels like a, or the first half of the movie kind of feels like an epilogue to Infinity War, which is kind of strange. You could have called this movie Avengers Epilogue. And the, oh my God, the exposition. The amount of exposition where, you know, sometimes it's Groot, no, not Groot, um, Rocket. He's explaining things and sometimes, sometimes it's uh, Hulk. We'll get to Hulk, don't worry. There's so much exposition, or like, oh, this this happened five years ago, and this happened to me five years ago. It's like, shut up. Um, let's see. So then that that's that. Then five years later, you've got uh, Steve Rogers holding some kind of um, uh, meeting for the survivors. Here you've got Joe Russo. Playing the gay man because they couldn't they couldn't get uh, one of these established characters right to be the gay character. Obviously, you would need to change a lot of things to get that character in the scene. But they were like, "Well, we need to tick off these boxes. We need to pander to certain you know uh, demographics." Wow, but, but we need a gay person. We need a gay person. Oh, Joe Russo, you just play this gay guy. Lost his husband after the, uh, from the Thanos snap, and he, they're being they're not, I'd, like you have to do it when the time is right with the right character, not just oh just get the director to play a gay person and the media's calling it oh the first gay character in the MCU, and they're getting really um, torn apart on social media. Some people are going, oh yeah, fantastic, or, oh, but you know, that's the media. I mean, you've got actual, the actual uh, people from that kind of background, you know, LGBTQ. Uh, they've been tearing the Russos apart, and I think it's hilarious, And uh, but we'll move on. Um, yeah, the Hulk, right? We can go into a whole a whole lot of characters here, but uh, what we've we've gone over the kind of seventies kind of rock music soundtrack, uh, which I didn't like. Um, we had then we catch up with um, what's her name? What's her name? Black Widow, right? Black Widow catches up with Ronan. So here's Ronan Clint Hawkeye. He's in Tokyo, I think, and he's hunting down, he's fighting uh, these Japanese Yakuza, whoever. And he's fighting the, the villain from Wolverine. Yeah, because in the Wolverine, you know, uh, the Wolverine film, where uh, Hugh Jackman goes to, uh, Logan goes to uh, Japan, one of the villains in that film, the actor's name, Hiroyuki Sanada, he was good in that film, and Marvel thought, "Well, let, let's get him back, and he's, he's he'll be he'll be playing the the Japanese boss, 
and he's going to be fighting. He'll be doing his sword fighting because he was quite good in that. So uh, he was the target. He just, yeah, that that's his that's his small role in this film. Unfortunately, he gets killed by Clint, and that's where uh, Black Widow turns up and says, "Come with me. You've been away long enough." Uh, then you, we meet up with Hulk. Well, no, no, you you get um, what's his name, Ant Man. He comes out of the the zone that he was in from the end of the second film that he was in, Ant Man, Ant Man Two, Ant Man and the Wasp. So he returns to normal time, and his kid has grown up by a considerable age. Um, and I think that's a plot hole, I'm not sure, because why is she older than everyone else who's been away, and then they're, when they come back, their friends are the same age. I think Spider-Man later on. Anyway, you've got Hulk. This is now five years later. We see Mark Ruffalo early on, but now it's like the Hulk, but it's Professor Hulk. And I've been waiting to see this for so many years, right? But it just didn't look right. Because you've got uh, kind of the Mark Ruffalo version of the Hulk, and the voice is Mark Ruffalo. You did they didn't add any kind of distortion or kind of deepen it or anything like that. All they did was uh, put Mark Ruffalo's voice. I thought that was really weak from a kind of sound design point of view. And he was also like smiling and like grinning and he reminded me of someone. I don't think it's Ricky Gervais. I think it's someone else, but maybe Ricky Gervais. And he's like joking and you know, every kind of, then they start, they start, they try to experiment with the time travel because, you know, um, Scott Lang has told them about, you know, we could do this and that. Um, they try to get Robert Downey Jr. Uh, it's Tony Stark, but Tony Stark's had a daughter now, so he's got more to lose. He's m moved on, um, and then the, all of a sudden he comes up uh, after he's been visited by Scott Lang and Steve Rogers and all that. First he says, "No, I don't want to be part of this new mission," and then he comes up with time travel overnight. He figures it out. So then he, he joins the team later on. But um, while they're kind of experimenting with time travel, you know, Scott Lang, he's, get, he's getting sent back to the past. He comes back as a kid, then he gets sent back, comes back as an old man, then he gets sent back, and he comes back as a kid, a baby. I don't know if that, I didn't understand. Like, is the Hulk that stupid, the Professor Hulk? He does, he's constantly getting his uh, maths wrong, or his equipment's wrong. Um, so that was odd. Then there's another scene. This is the scene that a lot of people have been seeing, uh, I've seen a lot of people complain about on online, is when the Hulk, uh, sorry, Banner Hulk, is explaining time travel. This is the, Ru the not the Russo brothers, the, the writers of this movie, the two guys their version of time travel, trying to put their spin on it, and it ends up just confusing people, seeing that. Um, so as he's explaining then, Don Cheadle, right, he says, oh, but what about those movies, Back to the Future, Time Cop? I was like, what's all these, re they just start listing off movies, references? That's a horrible scene. Then Scott Lang comes, oh, Die Hard? Oh, no, that's not. Hilarious. Um, and the Hulk's explanation is if you if your present self goes back in the past um, this is your past. So you can't what whatever you do in the past doesn't affect your future or your present day. Some crap like that. Doesn't even uh, and I, I think people then later on when they go back to the Battle of New York, they time travel there, because what what they figured out is there's three store. There's a certain point in time, I think during the Battle of New York, um, that there's three stones. 
uh, in that area and then there's other stones elsewhere so they split into teams to go and get them and I think it's Hulk he ends up um, so Hulk ends up meeting the ancient one right and she has the stone so it's like he, he then says oh I need that stone and she's like no 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 way so she force punches him whatever she does and uh, the Hulk falls and Banner is out and then they explain they talk about you know she explains her what time travel is in her understanding right so what happens is she she makes it clear like if you change the past that creates branches of you know different timelines which is kind of the normal understanding of time travel in Hollywood movies so I, I think that they're saying that she's right and the Hulk was wrong making Hulk look a uh, banner look even more stupid I don't know I would need to kind of discuss this a bit more with others. Um, what else is there? So then, also at the same time, you've got Natasha and Clint. They are off to find the Soul Stone, and as they go, as they're on their way, they're like, "Long, it's a long way from Budapest." They keep bringing up that Budapest. Like, who cares? Then Tony Stark and uh, Ant Man, Iron Man, Iron Man, and Ant Man, they arrive at the the just at that moment as they've they've cornered Loki or they've defeated Loki in the first movie, and they're kind of hiding. And uh, Tony Stark comes up with this. He says to Captain, he's on the kind of communication device he says yeah th that uh, suit did nothing for your ass and then Scott Lang says no that's America's ass what a lot of, uh, most of the movie kind of plays it serious which is fine which I, I prefer and then the, a few of the jokes does just don't kind of like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't kind of laugh. I, there was some funny moments. I'll give them that. One of them was in the scene. So um, the sh shield, or may, more likely the Hydra agents, have came and taken the Loki's uh, scepter, spear, or whatever it is. And that's got the soul stone. Uh, not the soul stone. Uh, it's got one of the stones in it. And. Um, what was it? No, they, they, they've got the Tesseract, right, the Tesseract. They've placed it in a briefcase and the Hydra agents are taking it away. They're in the elevator. Then Captain America arrives, uh, you know, the time-travelled one. And he gets into the elevator and he's like... Just when you think it's going to go the Winter Soldier moment, you know, when he starts beating them up. And, you know, does anyone want to get out? You think it's going to repeat that. But then he's like, um, I, I, I'm going to need that briefcase. And they're like, oh, we don't have these orders from you, for any, from anyone. Let me call them. Let me call the can I, HQ. And he's like, uh, he, he leans in to that guy and he's like, Hail Hydra. <laughs> and they're like, hmm. Uh, and, and so they give him the case and he walks off. And I was like, that's funny. That's actually quite funny. But... Wouldn't they know if he is or isn't a Hydra agent? You know? I don't know. But it was, fun. it was funny. And then he comes across as that time's Captain America. So the two Captain Americas fight. And this, they're fighting. And uh, the, our Steve Rogers, our time-traveled one, he's being strangled. And he says, Bucky is alive! Bucky! 
and that, that makes him stop. All you, Mar all you MCU fanboys, don't make fun of Martha because this moment was a hundred times worse. They stopped fighting because of Bucky. Um, and then there's a moment where things go wrong. What happens is the, there's a, a distraction. Something goes wrong. Loki, who has been taken away, this this the tesseract kind of falls out of briefcase, touches his, he looks down, he's no one's looking, he picks it up, he disappears. So that's going to lead into his Loki TV show. So there you go, Loki's alive as well. Couldn't get rid of him. Well, all the all the deaths are going to be uh, they're going to mean something. Yeah, they're going to be permanent. Mm, uh, no, no. Um. So I'm not, I won't go through the whole kind of plot and stuff, but just like Infinity War, there's so much going on. It's that when when you go back to a certain group of characters, you have to think to yourself, what what were these guys doing? What was their mission? What? All oh, right, I see. So it's really kind of mind numbing sometimes. Like then you've got. Something happened, let me check, let me check my notes. So, um, Black Widow and Hawkeye, they end up going to that place where, you know, the Red Skull is. And he, he greets them and he says, look, okay, well, he tells what, whatever he told Thanos, you know, have to sacrifice something you love. And then... Black Widow and Hawkeye fight it out, and they are going to. One of them. They're not going to kill each other. They're going to. One of them is going to sacrifice themselves. But they're fighting it out to see who does it first. And is Black Widow. Black Widow falls to her death, and Clint want, wanted to save her. Or he was trying to save her, but she let, you know, she let go or whatever. But like uh, my man from uh, the DC vs. Marvel podcast said, we know she's coming, well, she's not coming back, she's going to have her own show, so it's like her death kind of means nothing. Emotionally, right? And so you, the stone is picked up by, the soul stone is now from, with um, Clint, okay. And now everyone goes, well, what's happening with Nebula and War Machine? They track down Star-Lord, knock him out from that scene where he's dancing in the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy. So they knock him out and they go for this, the stone that he was trying to get. And just as... And that, this is a strange thing. This is strange. So they get the stone and War Machine and Nebula, they're about, they're, they're about to travel back into present day and they synchronise their device and then Don Cheadle leaves, War Machine leaves but Nebula kind of, she has this kind of malfunction and her system is kind of linked to the current time nebula who's with Thanos. So she kind of gets left behind. Or she misses her jump or something. Although some of these, some of these kind of time jumps and when they arrive back to present day all together for some reason. That doesn't match up. I don't know what that's all about. Because some characters are jumping uh, much later after everyone else, but they all turn up with their stones later on at the same time. But Neb Nebula has been switched because Thanos finds out through his own Nebula. This kind of recording comes out of our eye, and that's the memory of our Nebula. 
And then Thanos realizes, oh, I must have gotten all the souls, all the the stones, the infinity. I must have had the infinity gauntlet. I would have achieved what I wanted to achieve. So, and now there's a nebula out there who's a traitor. Hmm. And Gamora is there as well. So they go and get, they capture our nebula and the evil nebula takes her place and she goes back in present day. And well, so, and th this is when everyone comes back to present time. Everyone's like, where's Natasha? Oh, and uh, or she, they find out she's, she uh, didn't make it or she had to sacrifice herself. And this is a strange one, right? Because if Gamora was, sa Gamora was sacrificed by Thanos in Infinity War, but there's still a version of, there's still in a different time, a Gamora in this movie, right? With Thanos and Nebula. But they're saying that Black Widow, Natasha, cannot be brought back. They're like Thor says, you can bring her back. We've got time travel. And they say, no, she can't. Why not? You've got Gamora who got sacrificed, but she's still here in a different timeline, but she's there. Why can't you do the same for Natasha? I don't, I don't get that. And then, here's another thing I didn't like. So good, the good Nebula is still being held captive and Gamora goes to her and goes and uh, Nebula says you can change this. Like why you why do you still why why Thanos why do you still have the good the traitor Nebula? Why do you still have her around just kill her? Oh no, we have to keep her so then that she helps Gamora turn and join the good fight. Like, so stupid. So convenient. And then, you know, Thanos comes and destroys the Avengers uh, headquarters. Um, he tracks them down because of the evil nebula leads them to, uh, to the Avengers. And they, they, they got, because they got all the soul, they, all, they got all the stones and they lined them up with, a, I think, a Iron, Iron Man's glove hand. So they've made their own Infinity Gauntlet. And I think Hulk does do a snap. And something happens. I don't know. I think they do reverse the previous Thanos snap at that moment. But it's, it's kind of too late because Thanos came and he's... He, this Thanos has came and he wipes out the, just com bombards the Avengers uh, he each he headquarters, and n none of them die. Oh, they're not even it's not even ra Rocket Raccoon who just kind of they're trapped under rubble. Massive bombardment and everyone's fine or well, everyone's alive. So Clint gets the gauntlet. He starts running with it because his creatures after him. And he meets up with the evil nebula, but then the good nebula comes and shoots the evil nebula. And apparently, and according to their rules, it doesn't affect the good nebula killing her former, her former self. Because this is a different timeline or something, I don't know. Um, so then there's a face-off. So I've not, even, I don't, I've not even talked about Thor. Uh, did I talk about Thor? Oh, he's, all, he's got the fat suit. And he's got the hair and the beard. So, yeah. So that was a bit weird. So, and he is, like... He's like the Nathan Drake from the Uncharted games. The fat Nathan Drake. Reminds me of that. And he's... he's uh, uh, This is earlier in the film where, you know, he's now in New Asgard. Which is some kind of fishing village. A little bit like Aquaman in Justice League. Just a little similar similarity there. Huh? Um, so now, after they emerge from the wreckage of the bombing, 
And so it's Cap, Stark, and Thor. They see Thanos sitting there. And they approach him. And he's like, he starts saying, talking like, oh, all your failures brought you back to me, something like that. But I, I, and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to love uh, wiping out this misery, this little pest of a planet, something like that. He says, and I'm like, why is he talking to them like that? He he doesn't know. He he, he only found out about these people a few hours ago through a recording. But he's talking to them like he knows them. Because someone mentioned, you know, like, the Thanos that we knew in Infinity War, he dies at the start, he gets had, heads, has his head cut off at the beginning of the film. So this Thanos is like, reset. So it's not really, well, you, you kind of see what the problem is there. And then there's a whole lot of fighting. Can't remember what happens. Cap. So uh, what happens is... Um, Fan service. This is a big fan service moment. So it uh, looks like uh, Thanos is about to kill um, Thor with the Stormbreaker. He's like about to dig it into his chest. And then you see this moment, right? This is... I, I, I was like, this is what Star Wars The Force Awakens should have done. Where the lightsaber was moving and everyone thought, it's going to be Luke Skywalker, it's going to be Luke Skywalker. Oh no, it just goes to Rey. And these writers saw that and they saw their reaction and they thought, we're going to get, the, the hammer is going to rise and we're going to see, everyone's going to see it rising and it, it doesn't go to Thor, it goes to Captain America. He is worthy. And then Thor says, I knew it. And then as soon as the Captain America, he starts throwing the hammer and it's bouncing off. And he's got his shield as well, so he's using both the hammer and the shield. And at first it looks good, right? But then it just kind of gets, it just goes on a little bit too long and it gets a bit cartoony. I was like, ah. But I'm sure the fanboys love it. Um, and then, so Captain America still gets his ass kicked. Tony Stark gets his ass kicked. And just when you think it's all over... With Thanos, he invites his army, ships and everything. They're all coming. And then Captain America hears Falcon on your left. And all these portals open up the Doctor Strange portals. And everyone who's died is back. As you've got Black Panther, his, ar his Wakandan army, Falcon, Bucky... Scarlet Witch, Spider-Man, everyone's back. Doctor Strange. So I think I think when Hulk used the snap, that reset everything and that brought everyone back. But it took it was a, a, a quite a delay for them to come to this location. I think that's what happened. And. Uh, what happens next? So uh, they, they, so, so whole, the whole army's there and they're, uh, they're about to face off Lord of, Lord of the Rings style. And then you hear Avengers Assemble. That's what you've been waiting for. Um, then for some reason you've got Clint running through the battlefield with the Infinity Gauntlet. Like why? Why are you bringing this out into the open where anyone could grab it from you? And then he passes it to Spider-Man and gets really dumb. Like hot potato or some shit. And then you get Scarlet Witch. This moment, this here, this moment here with Scarlet Witch. She's like, you took everything from me or something. Which is very Superman-like. And he's like, I don't even know you. And she says, you will or something. Does she say you will? Is that another Batman v Superman reference? So she uses her powers, right? She's just fucking Dark Phoenix-like. And she gets Thanos and she's kind of 
her powers are kind of almost kind of tearing him a bit, just make him explode or something. And you think that she's fucking super powered, overpowered, whatever you want to call it. And she looks like she's going to kick some major ass. And Thanos shouts to his people, his, uh, I think it's Ebony Maw, um, something about uh, fire the cannons or something. Uh, he says, just do it. And then these, the cannons from these ships just start bombarding the whole battlefield. <laughs> Everyone's getting blown to bits. And so this frees him from Scarlet Witch. It was, it was it would have killed him, easy. And everything's being bombarded. Spider-Man had the Infinity Gauntlet, right? And he gets, I think he gets surrounded by these creatures or something. And then here, and then the ships, they turn their cannons to the sky, right? Something's entered the atmosphere. And you think, oh, is this going to be a huge, big surprise? Could it be Silver Surfer or... Fantastic Four or something like that. I was expecting something big. No, it's Captain Marvel. Brie Larson. And she destroys the ship just going flying through it and tearing it apart. Ship crash lands. And she comes and saves Peter Parker. Uh, no, she, she comes and saves uh, Spider-Man. And the idiot that he is the mo complete moron of a Spider-Man in this universe, right? On the battlefield, you've just been... He's all bloody and stuff, right? Something he was getting... I think he was trying to avoid the explosions and stuff, or he was uh, being uh, about to be murdered by these things, these creatures. But Captain Marvel comes, and she's standing over him, and the first words that come out of his mouth... Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Are you stupid? I don't care who, like, he doesn't know who she is. It could be anyone. Oh, hi, I'm Peter Parker. <sighs> so... What, is that? what else happens then? She starts fighting uh, Thanos. Thanos, he gets the the Infinity Gauntlet, the glove, and the stones, the the all the stones seem to be on it. And Captain America, he tries to not not uh, yeah. Thor tries to take him down, and he gets slapped away. Steve Rogers tries to take him down, he gets slapped away. Tony Stark gets knocked out, I think. Captain, Mar Captain Marvel, she comes and she's trying to kind of wrestle his fingers off the the glove or something. And he headbutts her, right? He head Thanos headbutts her. She just stands there looking at him with this, you know, resting bitch face. And the, But then he takes the stone, one of the stones off, uses it and punches her away. And then Iron Man comes. And then there's a struggle, and then he gets flung. He gets flung away, and Thanos is like, I, he uses this line. This is the second time he uses this line in the film. I am inevitable, which is kind of. I don't like that line. Again, it sounds stupid. And he does a click, and a snap, and then there's, oh, he realizes there's no stones. And he looks at Iron Man, and he's got, he's got the his Iron Man glove with the stones, uh, the stones in it. And he's like, I'm Iron Man. The thing is, that doesn't make any sense because earlier on, the Hulk, he had the glove. When he's doing that, he's struggling to, you know, um, f fight this power. But he managed to get the snap, but it ruins his arm, right? And uh, apparently, th doesn't Hulk have kind of regeneration? Because he doesn't seem to get better in this film later on. He's still got, like, he's got, his arm is in a sling. But uh, uh, that almost 
killed the Hulk. But here you have Tony Stark managing to do a snap. Just him. A human using the gut glove and the power of the stones. But he managed. But that's the thing. He's managed to do it. That's the a bit weird. But he clicks it, and the baddies fade away, and Thanos turns to ash. There you go. But then Stark, Tony Stark is dead. Everyone gets their moment. Well, not everyone, but um, War Machine. Peter Parker starts crying, and here comes Pepper Potts, and he passes out. He he passes away. And it's all sad. That I wouldn't say I cried at any moment, but there were some emotional moments, and that was like I could I felt the emotion for that scene. Um, what else happened? So that was it. Well, actually, the, it's like Lord of the Rings with this like ten endings. This ha also had like it just went on and on. Um. But you, you've all seen it, so you know what happens then. Uh, that, that's, so, when I said that they used the soul stone, uh, not the soul stone, they, they use... Isn't it that in previous movies that if you were to handle one of these stones, or the Tesseract, you had to, ha you had to have some kind of power to be able to handle them? Or some kind of device that could contain. Because if you held it, you would I don't know, disintegrate, explode, whatever, from the power. But in this movie, everyone's holding tesseracts, stones, or humans. I was like, what the hell? So I think that's a big major. They just flung that out and they just got rid of it. Anyone can hold anyone can hold these stones now. Then um, it was a team effort to get the stones back. Okay, they traveled back in time to get these stones. Three diff three, four different teams. But now, because you know the ancient one told Hulk, you need to bring these stones back and line them up. In there, wherever you found them, wherever you got them, get them back in that place at that exact time. And Captain America's like at the end, he's he's being sent by, he's, he's being sent into the past. He said, "I'll do it. Like, you're you're going you're going to do it all by yourself. You're going to go to Asgard. You're going to go to um, the the place where the Soul Stone is. You're going to meet the Red Skull, are you?" Um, so, it's nuts, man. It's like, oh yeah, he's going to do all that by himself. So he goes, and then he's supposed to come back. And the Hulk's like, oh, he's not coming back. Where is he? And then you see him sitting as an old man next to the kind of the river. And he has a, he has a discussion with um, Falcon. And he gives him the shield. He's an old man now, Steve Rogers. Because he stayed in the past, he got married to Peggy, Peggy Carter. Very selfish. I see a lot of people saying this is not a good ending to Captain America. I was like, I don't really care. <laughs> so that was my... And then the film ends with this kind of... Oldie, oldie music. So let's see, I've been ignoring, sorry guys, I've been ignoring you in the chat. Let's have a look, see what you guys are up to. So let's see. Oh wow, 202 people. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Oh, Dr. Ooze is here. Do you want to call in, Dr. Ooze? Skype in. All right, of course, Jay from Red Letter Media said he loved the first hour because it was people wallowing in misery. And of course, if it was a DC film, then, oh, the misery is the problem. Oh, my God, so dour, so sad. Oh, 
Oh, and of course, um, so you know, Captain America and Iron Man when they're in New York, things go wrong, and then they have to go to that military base. Because that's the, an, another chance for them to get, I think, the Tesseract. And guess who uh, Tony Stark bumps into? Oh, Howard Stark. Of course, he's going to bump him to his dad. So that was kind of cliche. Then Captain you know, Steve Rogers, he sees Peggy Carter in one of the rooms. Uh, the, the, the writing is kind of really kind of cliche at times. Dr. Ooze is in here, he says, Captain America was super famous, but no one noticed he was alive and married to Peggy for 70 years. Uh, hmm. oh, I, th I think he must have been like in hiding or something, but like for 70 years? Are you going to be hiding it for 70 years? <laughs> Captain America kissed his own niece. In Civil War. Mm. Optic Rouge says, I love this channel 3000. I put a picture of Zack Snyder and Debbie, Deborah Snyder, and I said, I love them 3000. <laughs> Just to piss off the MCU fanboys. Or mainly the Snyder haters out there. Ah, uh, four four seven says done, done, da done. But with the score again, really bad. Like they they had nothing apart from like the one or two themes that they have. The da 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 da. They just playing that throughout the film. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it wasn't 70 years, I don't think. It must have been about 40. For, what? Seven? Well, it was the 1940s, wasn't it? Must have been about 60 to 70 years. Uh, Nuko says, just wondering, you think this is better than Infinity War? I think they're about the same. I'll, I'll give them both like a 3 out of 5. It's entertaining enough, but the more you think about it, the score is going to go down. Yeah, Grace Randolph was like, she was saying things that, like, I could tell. It's the complete opposite of what I just saw. And she's saying, she's saying things that are the complete opposite. And I was like, no, sorry, Grace. Secret Fire says, why is everyone saying this is a good movie? Fans, fanboys, media, they're kind of predictable. They, 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 uh, I've noticed, like, if you say there's plot holes, the MCU fans are like, there are no plot holes. You just, these, uh, you, I can't take MCU fans seriously when they say there's no, pl uh, there's no plot holes in Endgame, be even though they're the ones who've been telling you. Turn your brain off. It's just fun. Don't take it too seriously all these years. Right? They, they, they've been saying this, so... If they don't want to use their brain, other people are going to use their brain. And then when you do, you realise there's plot holes. The Th Thor, right, Chris Hemsworth, I actually quite liked his kind of performance and his kind of, the kind of place that he was in, in this movie. But I, what was the fat suit all about? It didn't need to be fat uh, 
Hello, Belinda Nunes. I'm not drinking Pepsi or cola. I'm drinking, what is this, cranberry juice or something. Ah, <laughs> yes. So, uh, was it Sci-Fi Dragon says, Do you remember how all these people were saying that those leaked spoilers were fake? Well, it turns out they were all real. The, I think the only thing that you didn't see in the movie that was in the trailer was Natasha or Scarlett Johansson shooting her gun at the target. Kind of a dumb scene, sure, so uh, it's, it's good that was cut, but yeah, everything, everything was... Like, I, I reacted, I did a spoiler-free reaction to the leaked footage, and people were like, he's just reacting to faked, fake uh, clips because the Russo's film scenes that is sharp. Do you really think they have time to shoot scenes that they're not going to use? What are you talking about? You're going to get these actors come in and waste their time shooting scenes that are not going to be shown anywhere? LFC Gamer says, why do you talk like a funny accent? You think this is funny? Really? You should, see, you can, you should go on my channel, check out um, Shorty McShortbread, then you'll see what's funny. A what funny accent sounds like. Uh, Gypsy Som says, are you going to watch Game of Thrones? I'd like to, but I've, I've only seen the first season, so I don't have time to catch up. But that is something that I can I look at and go, I can understand why people would love this. Because it has depth, it has mythology, it has all that. And the Avengers movies are just kind of fluff. Solomon Dow says, The MCU sycophants have thrusted the Russo brothers into overrated territory. You should see, I, I watched, um, I think it was Mark Kermode, the BBC critic. I watched his review. And um, he's, he's, he, he makes a lot of, he does a lot of mental gymnastics when, for franchises that he's kind of, not franchises, but for films that he likes the director or he likes the actors, he will always try to give them a pass. For the Avengers movies, he comes out and says, oh, they're not really for me, but I can understand why people like this. And he's going on about how you know the narrative and the structure is, you know, has its problems, but it's funny. I was like, what? He said, it's emotional and it's funny. All of a sudden, Mark Kermode doesn't want to critique it too much. Smith Kotak says, I was shocked when no one died at the Avengers facility when Thanos attacked. Exactly. Yes, the Russo brothers are being are visionaries because that trailer came out. I can't remember the name of the film. Chadwick Boseman is a cop and he's uh, on the I think some cops get killed by these robbers one of them is Taylor Kish I think and the robbers find out there's a conspiracy and then they're on the run from the corrupt police but Chadwick Boseman is the good guy he's a good cop and then there's like a three-way kind of fight on this night I can't remember the name, but it's produced by the Russo brothers, right? And it comes up from the visionary directors of the Infinity War or Endgame, whatever. There's nothing visionary. That film looks so predictable and seen it all before. And they did that. They produced that Assassination Nation, which got, which got no reaction. So, uh, yeah. And another scene, right, 
right at the end, um, Thor says to what's Tessa Thompson's character, Valkyrie. He says, you, you, "You're the new leader of my people, New Asgard, if, even if that is his people or whoever they are." He says, "Good luck, Your Majesty." However. And he's, he goes off with the Guardians of the Galaxy for some reason. And that scene where him and Star-Lord and the others are in the ship and they're kind of joking about or trying to get one up each other, like whose ship this is and who's the boss. That scene was so cringy and such garbage comedy and it stood out so much because the rest of the film was fairly you know, serious. And the jokes felt, you know, they were fine, whatever, but it didn't have that cringe, that Guardian of the Galaxy cringe, right at the end. Trash. So Dead Skull says, Red Letter Media just complained and complained, then they said they loved it. And what was the point of um, Bucky? Like, what's, what does this guy do? Uh, they had, you had the Winter Soldier movie and then you had Civil War and it was all about about him. And now here it's like... Like what 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 is this purpose as part of the story? It's, it's nowhere in this film. Oh, and the girl power scene. The <laughs> So during this battle... Uh, with Thanos and his army and the Avengers. There's a moment where all the women superheroes all happen to kind of line up. And it's a big moment and the camera pans around them or kind of in front of them. And looks like some kind of advert for women's clothing or something. I, I, I don't know. It was just someone mentioned it on Twitter like film logic you know kind of cinematic kind of language logic it stood out too much and it was just it was like another kind of cash grab oh look who we, look what we're building to for the future <sighs> the russos are such visionaries that people forget they directed the world famous You, Me and Dupree. Get woke, go broke. <laughs> All you need is Scarlet Witch. But she's been pushed, Elizabeth Olsen, she's been pushed to TV. The Disney streaming service. Oh yeah, they, they had Fortnite, so Thor is uh, all fat and uh, he's with Korg, I think that's his name. And they're playing Fortnite. And he takes the headset, the chat headset, and he starts shouting at the other gamer. <sighs> Fortnite, I know what that is. I clapped. So that's basically, that's the kind of, that's why it's in there. Black Panther's sister is the most unnecessary character. Well, she, she was in there, but she, uh, did she look a bit CGI'd or something? I, I don't know. There's something about her kind of pose that looked a bit off. I don't know. Cor uh, Ar Armin from um, Comic Book Cast said it's the best superhero movie because that's what everyone's saying. So he's, he's going to say it as well. All the kind of... All the kind of big media sites. 
How long was Captain Marvel in Endgame? She was in it for like four or five minutes. That's it. I can't comment on the CGI quality because the 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 the, uh, the way I watched it wasn't uh, HD exactly. Uh, LFC Gamer says, "Do you think Robert Downey will make other movies now?" He should. I mean, like, how how many years has this these this franchise taken away from Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson? It's like I would like to see RDJ in something. Sherlock Sherlock Holmes three. Hello, hurry up! I want to see that. Been here just about an hour. We'll give it another half an hour if you like. Uh, let's see. About an hour. So click that like button. Click that like button if you hated Avengers Endgame. Click that like button if you liked Endgame. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not. I've not seen. I don't know who Mollard is. I, I, I will actually, Suki97, I will actually check out Detective Pikachu. It actually looks kind of funny. It looks quite, quite, quite good. I, I've never been like a Pikachu fan, like a Pokemon fan, but I can, I, like, I see it and I see it's there. It was kind of. I had kind of grown up already and this was like a, I could see it was for my nieces and stuff, my nephew. So it's always been there, I've, I've always kind of seen it. But I'll, I'll check out the movie, but Godzilla, mm, that looks good. The 80s wolf. He says, social engineering for profit sounds just like capitalism as usual then. <laughs> Casanova Frankenstein says, the Justice League 2 and 3 plot elements were so obvious it's painful. Did, did they cut out that scene? I think it... I, I'd, I think it's the Avengers. No, I think it was the Captain Marvel post-credit scene. We are Brie Larson, uh, like the Avengers are talking about, you know, what's in this. Something's happening, and what's going to happen? We don't know. And then one of them turns around, and Captain Marvel's there. Was that a post-credit? That was that a mid-credit scene? For Captain Marvel, and that was that supposed to be used in this endgame? And did they cut that out? Because if they did, I would imagine that's because it was very similar to what Zack Snyder mentioned at the BVS panel. Hmm.
Sean C says, uh, the review embargo on Godzilla doesn't lift until the 28th of May. Um, let's see. And that's three days before the movie comes out. I don't know, maybe they've got some big surprises in the movie and they want to keep any leaks from happening. Who knows? I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. Like, that is a good time. Release reviews a good three days, four days before a film comes out. Gets the buzz going. It's you PC, people see, tre it's, oh, it's trending. What is this? Oh, this movie sounds good. When does it come out? Oh, in three days' time, I'm going to go and watch it. That's if it's got good reviews, because a lot of people get turned off by bad reviews. And you know what? I don't mind, I don't care if uh, Endgame becomes the highest grossing movie at the box office, if it beats Avatar's record, let it beat its record, because now all these snarky, all these film snobs, right, they can now start bitching about Avengers Endgame, and then, then the MCU fanboys can fight with them. Ryan says, I definitely think all of the time travel stuff was the MCU anticipating Flashpoint, or am I paranoid? Well, you're saying that because the... I, here's the thing, if you... Uh, if it's true, you know, if the script was taken, was leaked to Marvel, you know, the Snyders and uh, Chris Terrio's reworked, not not the rework, the original plans they had for Justice League 2 and 3. No, not 1. 1 and 2. Parts 1 and 2 at least. If that, ha if that did get leaked, and the ti there was time travel stuff in there, right? You cannot just take someone's, someone's idea of, of a time travel movie and change it about because as soon as you start changing about you're kind of you're leaving yourself open to plot holes mistakes because that's already time travel is kind of a tricky kind of situation when it comes to the script it has to be kind of watertight and you've got you've got Chris Terrio working on it and Zack Snyder working on it they've gone over it you know, to kind of filter out any kind of plot holes and things like that. If you start changing things about... Hmm. Doctor Who says, This film shows the problem with an inter interconnected universe. You have to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. The problem is that this is a major problem when trying to make a movie. Yeah. Fox says, went from, uh, I think he is talking about Thor, went from a god to a crying fat loner, lower, who, was, who has panic attacks and needs hugs from his mommy. <sighs> yeah. So you've got that kind of Thor Ragnarok, uh, Thor in this movie. Yeah, Hulk, like, yeah, discussed it earlier. Hulk lost his healing factor.
Yeah, MX Bravo Disney hiring Terrio for episode 9. That says a lot. Doctor Who is saying, does anyone want to watch a film uh, where the biggest villain in MCU can punch her square in the face, Captain Marvel, and she doesn't flinch? So like I said, you know, you've got Scarlet Witch who's got all this power, right? She's about to rip Thanos apart. So what do you need Captain Marvel for? Who's she? She? That's kind of... Uh, have you noticed, right? Their, Marvel's first film with a black lead, black cast, African-American cast, and their first women-led superhero film, each of them was placed before an Avengers film. So, people, so it looks like people were really wanting to see the film but really the only reason people want to see it because it was the, la the, the last film before um, an Avengers film, a big Avengers film, Infinity War and the Endgame. See that? That's, that's the trick. That's what they used on people. Natalie Portman, was she, was that, that scene that she was in, was that recreated or was she I don't think she was I don't know she didn't have any speaking lines so was that a scene that they took from a Thor film I don't know can't remember because it just showed Rocket Raccoon kind of going up to her and then I think he must have kind of taken the stone from her from inside her or something and yeah like I said Professor Hulk is kind of creepy. He has this kind of grin that reminds me of Ricky Gervais or someone. Really weird and then the voice didn't have any kind of depth or grit to it. It just it was just Mark Ruffalo's talking. It didn't even it should have distorted his voice somehow. No Khalil, I do not think there will be a documentary exposing the Mar how Marvel stole Snyder's idea. No one's going to make a documentary about that. So Casanova Frankenstein says, Zach and Chris planned out BBS and JL's Justice Leagues 1 and 2, possibly 3, since late 2013. Early 2014, Civil War, Infinity War and Endgame, the Russo trilogy, all took elements from Zack's sandbox plans for the DCEU. And, you know, if, you, if anyone out there, you don't believe me or uh, Casanova here, can go and watch Chris Wong Swenson's videos, Film Junkies videos, my videos, Jay Oliver's tweets, um, Zack Snyder's comments and the stuff he shows on Vero. You put it all together and it's very clear that things were leaked to Marvel. If you're joining me late, I would say I would give Endgame a 3 out of 5, but most likely it would go down to a 2.5 out of 5 after some time. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, Natalie Portman's scene was just reused footage. That's why Rocket interacted with her off screen. Dog shit. <laughs> Um, Dr. U says, did you guys notice how they even cucked Black Panther, pushed him to the background and that now Okoye is the star? I think Black Panther got his moment when he grabs the the gauntlet and he starts running and smashing away the, 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 doing the kind of ground punch and People and all the things, the um, the creatures go flying. So I, I had this moment. He was kind of running with it, jumping all over the place. So that was that was the one moment he had. I can't even remember what Akoi did. Abo Steph is asking me, how did they? Copy or steal Snyder's idea. <sighs> go and check my previous videos. Go and check Chris Wong Swenson. Go and check Film Junkie. Just search for just search for it, dude. Jeff Johns is Lord Feige's cat. Yes, I think Natalie Portman was at the premiere, but I think that was just they invited her. The credits with all the Avenger signatures, I think it was, was kind of okay. I mean, again, like, similar to Infinity War, it just feels like too many characters, too much going on, and by that, like, like, they show you this group of characters doing something, this group of characters, this group of characters, and then when you go back to the original characters, or well, not original, but the first set of characters, you have to think, what was happening here again? What's going on? And it just feels like a series of scenes put together and ticking boxes and this needs to be wrapped up and all that kind of like the last episode of lost remember that gypsy psalm says what did you like about the movie like i say um, it was kind of entertaining for the most part. Um, I liked, I didn't mind the first half of the, half of the movie, how, well, like say the first 20 minutes were a bit odd. I thought they were kind of a bit, the structure was a bit weird, how they were kind of in opening the film. But, you know, all the stuff about, you know, after after the kind of five years later bit, um, catching up with what's been going on, and I didn't mind that. Like I say, I did like the when Captain America gets in the elevator and goes hail Hydra just to kind of take away the the briefcase from the Hydra agents.
there was just it was just it was enjoyable but for every good thing there's uh, that's in it there's a lot of stuff that's just tr they're trying too hard or just some it's just marvel man it's just more marvel studios And yeah, I, I am being generous by giving it a 3 out of 5. But I keep telling you it's going to go down to a 2.5. The more people talk about it, the more something comes up. Obviously the things, that all this, the things about all these idiots. Thanos demands your silence. Don't spot... I've noticed Marvel, the MCU fans are like, Oh my God, don't spoil it. Um, be nice to the cinema, you know, employees, uh, clear your trash, take your trash with you after the screening. Like, shut up, man. Like, these are things that everyone should normally do. They all be, all, they all, let's make it a special event for this movie. Get a life, man. Optic Rouge, who do you think will play the next Batman? I'm not even... It happens, it happens, I don't really care. <laughs> oh yeah, um, Leah's says... Let's talk about the arm cut at the beginning. I was like, F out of here. So, th why didn't they just do that the first time? When they first met Thanos in Infinity War? Oh, now, now they cut off his arm. And when they cut it off, then he's, always, or he's already destroyed the, the stones. It's just a, a gauntlet on its own. And then he cut his head off. He Thor the murderer. And another thing that I did like was, you know, towards the end with the uh, Captain America uh, Mjolnir moment. Which you can definitely tell, they, they saw the reaction to the missed opportunity that Force Awakens had with the lightsaber towards the end. And you thought Luke Skywalker was going to grab it. it. Almost kind of played out the same way. But this one was like fan service. Ultimate fan service. Yeah, the, these uh, Jose M says these are committee films. No, Russo brothers getting all this praise. Like, did someone call what do they call them? Pop culture legends or something? Like, shut up! What have they? Like, I, I would say Infinity War and Endgame are more watchable than. The other Avengers movies, but even still, that's like barely. And there's there are Winter like I know everyone says well, well they love Winter Soldier. I'm like yeah, it's a, a really try hard action thriller. I know people complaining about the 
the ending and certain characters not being treated properly and like I don't even care about that discussion like I don't it's an ending it's an ending when it comes to like the future of the MCU why is and another thing why is Spider-Man Far From Home ending phase 3 why is this movie not ending phase 3 it's kind of weird it's just the way they kind of have these films coming out and saying this is the beginning and end of a phrase of a phase so apparently we're going to get a Black Widow film probably going to get Doctor Strange 2 Captain Marvel 2 Black Panther 2 The Eternals um, so and now maybe a Guardians of the Galaxy 3 with Thor in it how predictable well not predictable just kind of a running out of ideas if you ask me and maybe a, an all women team up film so that's that's your MCU future guys Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel 2 and an all women team up film ah oh done that done in the the marvel studios look at us we want to be first not because it's it feels right and the sto writing and story is good it's because we want to be first so i think we'll leave it there we've been here half an hour and a half so like uh baby dark side says over here Smash that mother effing subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, um, Letterboxd, Discord. You can support us on Patreon if you like. The link is there. So uh, thank you all for joining in. This has been my Avengers Average End Lame review. Uh, click that like button, share, subscribe and all that. But until next time, I'm Shaker and I will catch you later.